Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making a video about Pilates and the science of Pilates versus weightlifting because I've seen so many unfortunately misleading viral TikToks the last few weeks as well as Instagram, YouTube, other areas as well talking about how bad weightlifting is for you and how much better Pilates is. And I just wanted to help you make the most informed decision about your training by bringing some science into it. So let's be clear. I have no problem with any style of workout that you enjoy and that you can be consistent with. What I do have a problem with is this demonizing of weightlifting and strength training with false information. So that's the main thing that I wanna focus on, the information that's available to us, both about strength training and Pilates and sort of dispelling some of those myths, especially myths surrounding cortisol, the stress hormone. Lots of creators are implying that weightlifting increases your cortisol levels and makes you feel stressed. People are saying phrases like, I was wrecking my body or I was beating my body up when they talk about strength training or weightlifting. Thin women and celebrities are used as examples of the results of Pilates and as we all know, genetics and nutrition play a huge role in the way that someone looks and obviously no exercise routine, whether it's strength training, Pilates, or anything else can be the sole reason that someone looks a certain way. There's lots of other things at play. Everybody is different. So just because one individual does Pilates and looks great, doesn't mean that it's because of Pilates that they look that way or that Pilates will work for everyone. Keep in mind that I am not a doctor. My only qualification is that I have a bachelor's in economics and data analytics where I learned how to read statistical studies and research studies and interpret them. So hopefully I can help bridge the gap between people who wanna incorporate science in their life but don't wanna do the research themselves and read through those papers because it can be a little bit dull. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a dietitian, a nutritionist, or a personal trainer, so please consult your doctor or a professional if you would like professional advice on this topic. So let's get right into it. We're gonna start by talking about the body of research on Pilates. Pilates has been studied for many specific things like back pain, risk of falling for older people, breast cancer, multiple sclerosis, cardiorespiratory fitness, and much more. But I did struggle to find research on fat loss and muscle building specific to Pilates. The closest thing that I could find was a study for fat loss for individuals who are overweight or obese. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. A meta-analysis that included 11 studies found that Pilates dramatically reduced body weight and body fat percentage in adults who are overweight or obese. A meta-analysis essentially takes a look at all of the research in an area and draws a broader conclusion based on multiple smaller studies. One thing to note is that in these studies, Pilates had no impact on waist circumference or lean body mass. This meta-analysis calls for more studies and more research in the area because there weren't very many studies to draw from. Another issue I found with the body of research is that there was not a clear and consistent definition of Pilates across the studies. So for example, does Pilates include a machine? Does it include a mat? Does it include small weights or just body weights? What types of moves are included in Pilates? Is there a reformer involved? Things like that were not clear and consistent across all studies. Next, I found a comparable study on resistance training. Resistance training is another name for strength training. It is a progressive use of varying loads, movements, and velocities to improve muscle strength and power. The meta-analysis that I found included 54 studies compared to 11 with the Pilates study, and compared to a no exercise control, this meta-analysis found that resistance training reduced body fat percentage, body fat mass, and visceral fat. So more studies and bigger sample sizes are always good. So we can be much more confident in the results of this meta-analysis as compared to the Pilates one, just because there are a lot more studies, almost five times as many. In general, strength training has been studied extensively for fat loss, muscle building, things like that, compared to Pilates, which has a very small body of research at this time. I'm gonna focus on the most common claim that I've been seeing in these viral videos, which is that strength training increases your cortisol and makes people feel stressed. So let's do a crash course on cortisol. Many people talk about cortisol without really understanding what it is, its function in your body, and some of the many benefits that it can have besides just making you feel stressed. So it is the stress hormone and it is a response that we feel when we're in a flight or fight situation, but it's often villainized because of this. Let's talk about some of the functions that cortisol has in your body. Cortisol manages how you use carbohydrates, fats, and proteins in the body. It can regulate your blood pressure. It helps control your sleep and wake cycle. It boosts energy and then afterwards restores balance and much, much more. Our cortisol levels are naturally higher in the morning to wake us up and lower in the evening to sort of calm us down before we go to sleep. Like anything in your body, too much or too little cortisol can cause issues. 
So how does cortisol work in exercise? Any workout that puts strain on your muscles or increases your heart rate will increase your cortisol, but how much will depend on the workout itself and the individual. Studies have shown that increases in cortisol after a workout are associated with more workout intensity and greater gains in muscle fiber. But one really important thing to keep in mind is that cortisol has been found to decrease after exercise is over. There are two main studies that confirm this. Both of them found that after exercise, cortisol decreased, and one of them found that it actually decreased to less than the pre-workout cortisol levels. We definitely need more research in this area though, especially with women specifically because many studies based on strength training only include men in their trials. Separate from cortisol, studies have shown that high intensity resistance training have an inverse relationship with stress. So those who participate in high intensity weight training are actually less stressed than those who don't. Resistance training was found to significantly decrease anxiety symptoms for those in their early to mid twenties. And other studies found that individuals who did high intensity exercise compared to moderate physical activity were less stressed than those who did moderate to no physical activity. Strength training has tons of other benefits too. I'm gonna go through a couple just so you can can consider these when you're deciding what to include in your training routine, but there are tons, tons more. I will link resources in the description if you're interested in learning more, but you can also just Google it. There are so many resources out there about the science-backed benefits of strength training. Many studies have found that strength training can play a role in slowing bone loss, and some studies have even shown that it can help promote building bone as well. And if you're a female and you're concerned about osteoporosis, this is a really, really huge plus. Many studies have also shown that muscle building and strength training is associated with better sleep. So it's been proven that you can build muscle mass by strength training and individuals with more muscle actually burn more calories at rest. So if you increase your muscle mass, you can eat more and keep the same body shape and not put on additional fat. Strength training has also been proven to improve your heart health. And this is just to name a few. If you're interested in hearing more benefits and diving into the science of that a little bit more, I would be happy to make a video. Let me know if you're interested in seeing that in the comments. What should you do if you are currently weight training and you're concerned about stress levels? My first recommendation would be to see a doctor or a professional who can help you out with that. If you're not at that point where you wanna seek professional help, some other options are to experiment with your training routine. Maybe it would be a good time to try different types of exercise, different times of day to exercise, and just new routines. That could, that could never hurt, that experimenting. My intention with this video was not to discourage you from trying Pilates. I have tried Pilates, I've enjoyed it, and I know many people who love it and enjoy it and can stay much more consistent with Pilates versus weight training or strength training. And it's much more effective to have a fitness routine maybe instead of the perfect or most science-backed fitness routine. I just wanna make sure that you're able to to make an informed decision using the available body of research versus using anecdotal evidence that may be misleading, especially with all the TikTok influencers and celebrities who may have other parts of the equation like nutrition or genetics involved. Some key takeaways and some things to think about as you're choosing what training routine you want to have moving forward. Like I've said, any exercise that you can be consistent with is the best exercise. So that should be your top priority. Think about your individual goals. Are you trying to lose fat? Are you trying to build muscle? Are you trying to keep your heart and body healthy? What are your main goals? Another thing to think about is what do you enjoy? What makes you excited to exercise and work out? Do you need to be in a class? Do you like being alone? Do you like having a program to follow or making it up as you go? Do you like being outside or being with friends? Consider all those different aspects as well. Another thing to think about is cost. Is it a class that you need to pay for each time you go or is there a flat rate fee at a gym? or are you just exercising at home or outside for free? Another thing, I think this may be the most important thing for most people is efficiency. So studies have found that you can achieve the same results in resistance training by increasing your reps if you decrease your weight. So you could be doing 25 to 30 body weight reps and as long as you're training close to failure, you'll get the same results as if you'd done eight to 12 reps with weight. But a huge consideration is how much longer those body weight reps will take for you to see the same results as if you just added a little bit of weight. So they can be equally effective, but one is much more time efficient. Many of us are busy, so if time efficiency is important to you, consider weight training or strength training where you can get close to failure much quicker than if you're just using body weight in something like Pilates. I hope this video was helpful in clearing up some of the misinformation that's going around online. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're interested in seeing more science-based health and fitness, subscribe. Bye.